Hi, and welcome back to the Classic MGB channel. Now, before I start, one of the great things about YouTube is you can see exactly how much people enjoy your content, and we are thrilled over the amount of people that have already subscribed. But as I've said before, the more the merrier. So it would be great if you could subscribe and click on the bell to make sure you're notified about new content as we upload it. Subscriptions really do make a difference to what we do. So, on to the video, but before we start, I must give credit to David Knoll's excellent book, Superlative MGB. It is a must-read for any keen MGB enthusiast. So the MGB's been around for more than 60 years. In that time, probably more words have been written about it than almost any other classic car. But there may be a few facts that you may not know. So stay watching, let us know what you think in the comments, and if you enjoy the video, a like would be much appreciated. Shortly after the MGB was launched in 1962, Morris Motors received a letter from Renault, alleging that MG had copied the nose design of the MGB from their Caravelle Floride models. The letter stated that Renault had registered the shape in 1959 and claimed ownership of the headlamp nacelles. However, MG were able to demonstrate that there were already many other similar designs, including Ferraris, and eventually Renault abandoned the case. So what do you think? Did the MG designers copy Renault? The first large shipments of MGBs were to the USA, most of them for California. However, quality control wasn't perfect in those early days, as the first 50 engines were actually shipped with the wrong pistons. A quick strip down and rebuild process was established, and all pistons were replaced by two teams working 12 hours a day in just six days. Many think that the MGB naming convention was simply a logical step from the MGA, and this is reinforced by the naming of the MGC as the model coming after the B, but actually the MGB was originally going to be the name for the MGA twin cam. The MGB will be forever linked to the classic BMC B-series engine. But when the MGB was being designed, the British Motor Corporation was also planning a range of V4 and V6 engines, and the MGB was expected to receive a 2-litre V4. But when the new engine project was sadly scrapped, it was back to the trusty B-series engine. During development of the MGB, several rear suspension layouts were tried, including a hydroelastic system. The more sophisticated trailing arm with coil spring approach was abandoned when Roy Brocklehurst and Tony Felmingham managed to flip an MGA equipped with a system onto its roof and, fortunately unhurt, had to hitch a ride back to the factory in a Royal Mail lorry. Shortly afterwards, the tried and tested cart spring rear suspension was adopted for the MGB. Model MGBs have always been popular, and there were a wide range of both roadsters and GTs produced. Probably the most popular in the UK was the Corgi MGB GT, model number 327 for the geeks. This was originally produced between 1967 and 1969, and an example in good condition with the box, recently sold for £95. Fortunately, the Corgi Model Club have produced an authentic rear shoe which is suitably close to the original, even including the suitcase in the boot. Watch out for our video on MGB models coming soon. It's well known that Prince Charles, now King Charles III, was given an MGC GT for his 21st birthday by Her Majesty the Queen. This car was specially built with carefully applied welds, dressed seams, and perfect components throughout. However, the first body shell was damaged by a wayward forklift driver at the works, but luckily a second body shell had been produced just in case. When you think of a police car, the MGB probably isn't the first car that springs to mind, but believe it or not, many UK police forces used MGBs, GTs, 
MGCs and V8s. Although some were unmarked, my guess is that most were probably traffic cars. Transporting a prisoner in an MGB would be challenging to say the least. If there are any ex-police officers that remember these cars, we would love to hear from you. Now here's one for the geeks. Many MGBs were fitted with row style or Ross style wheels as standard. But do you know why they were so called? No? Well, they were based on an American design called Magnum, made by the Motor Wheel Corporation based in Michigan, and produced by a man named Rubri Owen. And it was his initials that gave rise to the row style. Most people know that the MGB GT styling was carried out by Pininfarina in Turin. But the relationship between the design house and the British Motor Corporation dates back to 1956, when Prince Philip, the Queen's consort, criticised the styling of the BMC model range. The boss of BMC at the time, Leonard Lord, then contacted Pininfarina and the first model designed under the new collaboration was the A40 Farina. So we probably have Prince Philip to thank for the stunning design of the MGB GT. Rest in peace, sir. So that's it, 10 facts about the MGB you may not have known. Let us know what you think in the comments and if you have some little known facts about the MGB, send them in and maybe we'll do another 10 facts about the MGB. As always, many thanks for watching. Take care.